We're going to do some really cool things with ir today. Join us on a rigorous step-by-step journey to fluency. I'm Timothy, and this is LearnCraft Spanish. Yesterday, when we started practicing voy, va, vas, van, and vamos, I mentioned that these words can sometimes be translated as either I go or I am going, she goes or she is going, and so on. Let's look at a specific situation in English where we would use this phrasing. I am going to do something. What is this sentence? Am I actually going somewhere? If we look closely at it, we can see that we're not going anywhere. Instead, we're actually using the phrase, I am going, to indicate doing something in the future. Here's another example. She is going to be here. I'm not saying that she's going anywhere. Instead, it's understood in English that going to, when followed by another verb, means that we're putting that verb in the future. Well, I've got great news for you. You can do this in Spanish as well. You'll use one of your five conjugations of ir, and then you'll put a after it, and then add any infinitive. Let's try this with hacer. He, she, or it is going to do is va a hacer. You are going to do is vas a hacer. They are going to do is van a hacer. And we are going to do is vamos a hacer. Now, this is extremely handy because we can replace hacer with the name of any other verb to put it in the future. Let's go ahead and practice this right now with some very simple examples. You are going to be here. Vas a estar aquí. Vas a estar aquí. He is going to be my friend. Él va a ser mi amigo. Él va a ser mi amigo. You're going to do something. Vas a hacer algo. Vas a hacer algo. We are going to be here. Vamos a estar aquí. Vamos a estar aquí. In the next one, the friends are feminine. They're going to be friends. Van a ser amigas. Van a ser amigas. So in all of these cases, the meaning of what's going on doesn't actually come from ir. It comes from the verb that ir is modifying. When I say van a ser amigas, I'm not saying that anyone is actually going anywhere, just that they're going to be friends. So basically, we can say that ir has two different meanings. It can refer to going somewhere, but it can also be used as an auxiliary verb to put another verb in the future. Of course, we've worked with other auxiliary verbs as well. Haber is used to put another verb in the past using its participle, as in lo hemos hecho. And estar can be used along with another verb's gerund to place emphasis on a specific moment, such as she was doing it. Lo estaba haciendo. In each case, the auxiliary verb is conjugated, and then the verb that actually gives meaning to the sentence uses some sort of unconjugated form. Now, here's something really fun. We can actually put ir in the future by using this trick. We'll first conjugate ir, then add the word a, 
Then use the infinitive ir. For example, van a ir or vas a ir. Try it yourself in these next two examples. I'm going to go to that place. Voy a ir a ese lugar. Voy a ir a ese lugar. We're going to go to the house. Vamos a ir a la casa. Vamos a ir a la casa. Now let's make it a little more complicated. Remember that when we use haber to put things in the past, we normally use the present tense form of haber, as in ha sido, for he has been. But we're also allowed to put things in the past of the past, using the past tense form of haber, as in había sido, literally he had been. We can do the same thing with ir, to put things in the future of the past. To show why this is important, compare these two sentences in English. I am going to be at the place. I was going to be at the place. In the first sentence, I'm using going to refer to the future. But in the second sentence, I'm referencing something that was going to be the case. That's the future of the past. Of course, to make this work in Spanish, we're going to have to learn some past tense forms of ir, specifically the imperfect past tense. These are all based on the word iba, spelled I-B-A. The basic form iba can mean he was going, she was going, it was going, or I was going. The rest of the forms can easily be derived from our normal verb patterns, so see if you can predict them. How do you think you would say, they were going? Iban. What about, you were going? Ibas. And how about, we were going? That's íbamos, with an accent mark over the letter I. Íbamos. Here are a couple of examples. They were going to do something. Iban a hacer algo. See if you can predict how to say this one. He was going to be here. Iba a estar aquí. Iba a estar aquí. In the next one, everyone is masculine. We were going to be friends. Íbamos a ser amigos. Íbamos a ser amigos. Now, you actually can use these imperfect forms of ir to refer to going somewhere, but for the purposes of this episode, we're only going to use these verbs to create the future of the past. In tomorrow's episode, we'll talk about other ways you can put ir itself in the past. Before we go on to today's quiz, let's enhance the variety of our sentences by learning three more adverbs. Now that we've begun learning action verbs, We can add color to the actions by using adverbs that describe how things are being done. Adverbs can add many different types of description. For example, aquí describes where something is done, and más can describe how much something is done. Imagine we're working with a single sentence, I have done it, or lo he hecho. We can add information about where it is by adding here to the end. Lo he hecho aquí. And then I have done it more adds the information of how much I have done it. 
Lo he hecho más. Adverbs can also describe the way something is done. We've already learned one of these adverbs, the word bien, which means well. For example, I have done it well. Lo he hecho bien. The opposite of this is mal, which means badly. Here's I have done it badly. Lo he hecho mal. The words bien and mal are pretty simple judgments as to how something is being done. Let's also learn some general purpose words that can add even more description. One of the handiest is the word así, which means this way. I have done it this way. Lo he hecho así. This word is spelled A-S-I with an accent mark over the I. It can actually be translated into English in a variety of ways. This way, that way, like this, or like that. An antiquated way of translating it is thus, when thus is used as an adverb. But let's use a quick quiz to practice translating it from some common translations. They're doing it like that. Lo están haciendo así. Lo están haciendo así. I go to the place like this. Voy al lugar así. Voy al lugar así. I don't want to do this like that. No, I want hacer esto así. No quiero hacer esto así. The adverb así is pretty special in how many different ways it can be used. You can even use it along with ser to describe not how someone is doing something, but how someone is as a person, as a part of their identity. For example, they are that way. Ellos son así. Our last word is como, which means something like like or as. This is another adverb used to describe how something is done, but it comes with some complications. What's weird about como is that it can't be used by itself like Ya, aquí, bien, and mal. But also, como is not used to modify adjectives and adverbs as muy is. Instead, it's kind of in a category of its own. Como is generally used before either a noun or an entire sentence. The easiest way to think about como is that it's translated as the English word as, specifically when as is used as an adverb. Here's a simple example. I have gone to the place as you know. Yo he ido al lugar como tú know. Yo he ido al lugar como tú sabes. Let's break this sentence down. There are two full clauses or complete sentences here. I have gone to the place, and you know. But they're sort of joined together by the word como. Normally, this is the role of a conjunction, but como is not considered a conjunction. Another example is, he has done it as I have done it. Él lo ha hecho como yo lo he hecho. In this case, we're comparing the way that things are done. So the whole phrase that starts with como is a description of how he has done it. We could instead use así. Compare these two sentences. 
Él lo ha hecho así. Él lo ha hecho como yo lo he hecho. Now here's a fun thing we can do with como. Instead of saying this whole long sentence, he has done it as I have done it, we can simply say he has done it as I or él lo ha hecho como yo. Él lo ha hecho como yo. Of course, in English, we rarely say anything as awkward as he has done it as I. Instead, we say, he has done it like me. So the fact is that como is often translated as like in English. For example, check out this sentence. Those houses are like these. Esas casas son como estas. But we have to be really careful about starting to think of como simply as like, because that can lead to dangerous mistranslations. The word like is translated in all kinds of different ways into Spanish. It only means like when the word like could be replaced with as. So when in doubt, try the as test. But there's also a complication on the flip side. In English, we use the word as in multiple different ways. Take this sentence, for example. I did it as he did it. This can actually mean two different things. I did it like he did it, or I did it while he did it. The word como only refers to the former meaning of the word as. There's a different word for while. So when you use como to mean as, remember that it never means while. Instead, it means something between as and like. So, when in doubt, perform the like test. In summary, como means as or like specifically when either of those could be translated as the other one. Let's practice with some sentence examples. I have gone to the house like she. He ido a la casa como ella. He ido a la casa como ella. They are doing it as he is doing it. Lo están haciendo como él lo está haciendo. Lo están haciendo como él lo está haciendo. Let's practice our new adverbs along with everything we've learned about ir using today's final quiz. I had done it like that. Lo había hecho así. Lo había hecho así. They are going towards that house. Están yendo towards esa casa. Están yendo hacia esa casa. By that day, she will have done that. Para ese día, ella habrá hecho eso. Para ese día, ella habrá hecho eso. We are going to do what you want us to do. Vamos a hacer lo que you want que we do. Vamos a hacer lo que quieres que hagamos. They're going to do that badly. Van a hacer eso mal. Van a hacer eso mal. In the next one, everyone is feminine. 
I'm going that day, but they aren't going. Yo voy ese día, pero ellas no van. Yo voy ese día, pero ellas no van. They had done it like her. Lo habían hecho como ella. Lo habían hecho como ella. You were going to be a good guy like him. Ibas a ser un buen chico como él. Ibas a ser un buen chico como él. In the next one, use a formal voice. You aren't going to go to the opera. Usted no va a ir a la ópera. Usted no va a ir a la ópera. That time you all were going to be in that place. Esa vez ustedes iban a estar en ese lugar. Esa vez ustedes iban a estar en ese lugar. But she was going to make something. Pero iba a hacer algo. Pero iba a hacer algo. You all aren't here. That's why we are going to the place. Ustedes no están aquí. Por eso vamos al lugar. Ustedes no están aquí. Por eso vamos al lugar. You hadn't told me that. No me habías told eso. No me habías dicho eso. I hadn't done it, but I was going to do it. No lo había hecho, pero lo iba a hacer. No lo había hecho, pero lo iba a hacer. You aren't going to the party? No vas a the party? No vas a la fiesta? You're going to do what I'm telling you. Vas a hacer lo que te I'm telling. Vas a hacer lo que te digo. We were going to be here. Íbamos a estar aquí. Íbamos a estar aquí. We hadn't gone by that path. No habíamos ido por that path. No habíamos ido por ese camino. I'm not going to be that girl anymore. Ya no voy a ser esa chica. Ya no voy a ser esa chica. Get more practice with all of this using the transcript and flashcards at lcspodcast.com slash 43. Tomorrow we're going to learn the rest of our essential conjugations of ir, including the preterite, the subjunctive, and the future. This show is brought to you by LearnCraftSpanish.com.
The Spanish voice in this episode was our coach, Michael Agudelo. Our music was provided by the Seattle Marimba Quartet, and I'm Timothy, encouraging you to do the hard work of learning Spanish. Acquiring a second language is one of the most fulfilling things you can do, so start your fluency journey today at lcspodcast.com.